Hi, I'm Kinetic Turtle. You can call me KT or Matt. That's my name. I'm a musician, a Lego builder, a dad, and as of a few months ago, a big fan of flinging foam. The dart sport community has a lot of great people with a lot of experience doing reviews, coming up with new mods, and designing great kits and products. So at first, I wasn't sure I had anything to offer as a content creator. But the only story anyone can really tell is their own, and I hope I can offer a unique and helpful perspective as a parent involved in the hobby, as well as a person who already has a background in electronics and modding, but is new to modding blasters specifically. Um, I plan to use this channel to share my own journey as I learn about this hobby, to tell stories and share my experiences in a way that I hope will be entertaining, but also useful to people experimenting with mods or trying to navigate the market for themselves or for their kids. In this video, I want to tell sort of a story so far about how I got into the hobby, a couple of the pitfalls I hit along the way, and the mods I've already completed as I've learned my way through blasters new and old. Uh, then I'll talk about some of the things I have planned for the near future. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to this channel. I'll soon be back with more. Also, please check out my Twitch channel linked in the description uh, where I mostly play music uh, with live looping and chip tunes, lots of weird instruments, uh, but I also do modding workbench streams and occasional gaming. I hope to see you there. Before I even knew about Nerf YouTube or the NIC as a whole or that there was such a big community to reach out to and, and learn from, I had access to some blasters that me and my kids were playing with, a strong arm, a disruptor, a stratabo some random things, and we had fun around the house. And one day I thought it would be fun to come home with like a big blaster and surprise them and just like shoot them a whole bunch. And so the first thing that I bought was an Elite 2.0 Shockwave. We also wound up with an Echo. It did what I wanted it to do when I came home, like it was fun, but it was hard to hit anything with it. Even before we knew anything about anything, it was clear that there was a quality difference between that and the other things that we had. Um, I don't have them anymore. My kids enjoyed how they looked, how they felt, um, they could prime them and they could use them, but they never hit anything. And they both got so frustrated with the idea of shooting foam, they almost gave up on it as an activity. I started thrifting some things, I started finding some stuff around, uh, some friends gave us some stuff, and we moved on pretty swiftly to some of the first little mods that I started doing. One of the first things I did was this Elite Fire Strike. Very little has been done to it. However, it does have a blue LED instead of a red LED because that's just what my kids wanted. But this was a really good first experience in opening up a blaster and just looking at what was going on inside and understanding more clearly how it worked and starting to teach my kids how it worked. The minute that they got to open it up and see what actually happens when you prime it and when you fire it and why the dart comes out, they understood the sport better and got more interested and more excited about it. So I ordered a couple parts and I upgraded the spring on a strong arm. My kids can't prime it. This is not a super heavy spring. My older kid is nine. He can barely pull it back. And that was a really quick early lesson. What is the kind of modding I want to do for me? What is the kind of modding I want to do for my kids? How does it benefit all of us? So one of the next things that I did, I found this Quattro Blast. This is a dart zone blaster that has the four rotating drums. My youngest kid was really into the Elite Shockwave and they were sad to see it go even though they understood the newer blasters were just better. This, as a similar form factor to the Shockwave, was really appealing to my youngest. But the prime weight was too much for him. However, I took the original spring out of this strong arm that I knew he could prime and I managed to replace the spring in this Quattro Blast with the lighter strong arm spring. So this is one of the first mods I did, and it's actually a downgraded spring to allow younger kids to use it. One of the next things I modded was this clear barrel break. It was the first clear blaster we'd gotten our hands on, and it was broken, the handle was breaking. Uh, so we opened it up and we did the AR removal. Now I don't do a lot of AR removals. I've learned pretty quickly from other people involved in the hobby. AR removal doesn't make a lot of sense on most newer blasters. 
But this is an old reverse plunger blaster, which means it has a relatively inefficient design. And the AR removal is just a thing we could do to make it a little bit better. So I did that and found out just how much of a nightmare this thing is to open up and close. Then it fell off a table one time and the handle broke. So currently the status of this is the handle is super glued together because all the screw posts have broken. So when this breaks again, it's gone. It already doesn't shoot very far. It's a lot of fun at home. This is the kind of thing that my kids just really love it. So whether it's good or not, it's a good blaster for them. So at this point, I had found the confidence to sort of strike out on my own and try some things. I found this Halo M6 pistol. I really wanted to use it. I didn't have any Boomco darts and I was able to take the long shot front gun and steal its barrel and convert this to take elite darts. It shoots quite well shoots around elite standard, and it's just really fun to operate. It's tiny and it's, I'm a big Halo fan, so it was just super fun. This is one of the first projects where I just dug in with no guide to follow, no instructions, and just figured it out. And it went super well. It works well, there's a couple cracks in the case. Uh, Out of Darts has a great video on these on how to open them up. It did fall prey to the crack that can often happen up here where the post crosses the priming mechanism but it's a lot of fun we still play with this a ton that's a great sidearm uh, i did invest in a couple 3d printed things i got a couple of gavin fuzzy's great eight round hammer shot cylinders i replaced one of them i really love this print i know that it's less popular with some people than the other prints it's just really fun the goal of all of this is just to have fun so when i saw this i, I really wanted one Everything inside here is actually from an older hammer shot because the minute I swapped the hardware in, the catch didn't work as well. It's kind of an unfortunate reminder of how downhill a lot of toy companies, not just Hasbro, have gone with their manufacturing standards um, and what they're willing to put on shelves. Another for the kids project, we wound up with this Adventure Force Enforcer and my youngest absolutely adores this thing. The way that it works is you flip this power switch and it just starts revving constantly until you pull the trigger and then the darts start to come out. I installed this little switch and the switch now makes it rev. There's some big side chain guides on here which are totally unnecessary. We took those off and this has been a crowd favorite with the kids. I did recently find a scorpion as well. We put a button on this one. I'm probably going to change this switch out to a button because I think it's a little more comfortable. Um, but now this also. And this is a ton of fun. This is, to me, kind of a sleeper hit. The scorpion has a little bit of a slower rate of fire, but the enforcer is a really great piece of kit, um, which I think is underrated. Additionally, because I don't want to make it seem like I've had nothing but successes in the last three months, here is an end strike bow. I honestly forget what these are called. I know that they're super common and people do all kinds of cool like HP modifications and stuff with this. I tried to convert it to just shoot darts and I stuffed an extra spring in there and um, it's really loud and it doesn't really work at all so yeah you know that happens too i also got myself an adventure force spectrum this is such a good blaster stock performance this thing is wild and it is cheap there's some really great stuff available for it i did get a derezzed kit i didn't wind up upgrading electronics in this even though i got the flywheels i also got the replacement mag release for it, which is a huge upgrade. We have a lot of those 18 round magazines that won't work without the change on this. You do have to cut a little bit of plastic inside or it will catch on the plastic, but that was not hard to figure out. This doesn't really need any modification to be a great blaster, but with a tiny bit of work, it's been a great performer. And around this time, I also did one of the weirder experiments that I've done so far, which has actually been somewhat of a success. This is the Barricade, uh, Barricade, stuffed into a violin body. If you look at the back, we have the battery compartment. The motor cage is completely exposed. 
This just came about from a ridiculous conversation uh, a user on Walcom's Discord server, uh, May, was going to put a blaster in a Guitar Hero controller, and someone said, haha, what if you did one in a violin? And I was like, I have a broken violin, I don't know, I could do that. So um, here we are. At some point I'm going to come back, I'm going to put a real barrel in it, I think, um, or at least some kind of muzzle here to hopefully guide darts and make it so that jams don't just wind up loose inside the violin body, which is pretty difficult to take apart and open right now. This is about where I started to experiment with some higher power. I got uh, a couple kits. I ordered them from out of darts, uh, worker kits mostly, and some half dart stuff. I got the Gavin Fuzzy pump grip because I prefer a pump grip style, just personal preference. It's shooting over 200. That was almost accidental. I, I didn't necessarily intend to go that strong. I don't really have a setting to use that in. It is very fun to shoot though. This is something my kids are completely incapable of using. They cannot prime this. They can barely pull the trigger. Even if I prime it and hand it to them, they have to put two hands on it and pull as hard as they possibly can. And honestly, they shouldn't be using it anyway. Um, they're not really ready for that level of power, which can hurt somebody. Um, but it can cross the park near my house pretty easily, and it's just a ton of fun. I have an extra half dart magazine adapter stuffed in the back here. It's, it's been super fun. And then to go along with that, we had a Falcon Fire kicking around as well, and I decided to do a Spamf kit. This is such a cool kit. Gavin Fuzzy's done a lot of great work. Highly recommend his work. I also tried to do some stuff that was a little bit more jank to get bigger numbers. Uh, this is a retaliator that has two retaliator springs in it. There's actually a story behind this retaliator that's gonna get its own video. I found this retaliator at the dump. Pretty pristine condition with just a pair of springs. I just took two retaliators, took one apart that looked really gnarly, took the springs, shoved them in there. This was a suggestion by Jolt King. It shoots 100, it works consistently, it's, and it cost me literally nothing because I found the blaster at the dump, and the other blaster was just, someone gave it to us. You can do a lot with very, very little. I have really wanted for a long time a nice raven, but ravens are hard to find, and I didn't want to take my only raven and mess it up with the first attempt at uh, installing new motors and converting it to lipo. Soldering is probably the biggest hurdle for a lot of people in doing these kinds of mods. One thing that I already was very comfortable coming into on this was soldering and working with electronics. I've repaired music electronics for years, done my own modifications, built kits, done lots of other household repairs. It's a very comfortable area for me. So I got some strifes. Uh, this is the first one that I did. It runs on 2S, it has honey badgers, it's very, very straightforward. It worked right out of the bat. It hits about 120 and it's just a ton of fun. So then finally, I did then after my success with the Strife, dig in and do the Raven. Obviously it looks pretty much stock. I've added a Proud Papa on here shooting Mega. Again, it's running on 2S LiPo, has a Daybreak cage with Twilight wheels in it and Fang revamps. And I think because I picked a slightly higher crush than I should have, it's hitting harder than I intended. It's hitting around 150. It's really, really fun, but it is definitely more than I intended. Uh, it's not something that I could take to an HVZ event. So I have some decisions to make in that regard, and I'm excited to do more along these lines. This is definitely my favorite blaster right now. I like this. I like it being tight to my body and not be dangling around on a long strap. I'm totally in love with it. So that's where I'm at now. Um, and I have more plans going forward. I have an Ultra 2. I want to do one of those elite conversion kits. I have plans that involve a Hornet and a Fortnite rocket launcher. And we have two Terra Scouts and an extra controller. And I want to convert that extra controller into a wearable controller. So that's a project down the road, which is also right down my alley because it's not really a Nerf project. It's just an electronics project. So I'm pretty excited about that. It should be a ton of fun. So that's where I'm at. I hope this recap has been fun for you. Uh, I know that making all this stuff was definitely a lot of fun for me. Um, thanks to all the amazing people in this community that I've learned from so far, the designers and creators whose products and mod concepts I've benefited from, and all the friends I've made along the way. I'll be back with more videos soon, so don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.